Okay. All right, over to you. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here and join with and joining you today. Um, so my background is I professionally, I have a bachelor of science degree as a physical therapist. Um, and then I also have spent mm, nearly 30 years studying with a meditation master who has become my teacher and still my teacher today. Um, but another uh, title that I own, gladly will own and share with you is I am a recovering perfectionist. Um, I'm a person who grew up really kind of feeling much safer in a world where I could have a sense of order, where beginnings and middles and endings were tied together, the predictability of life. And so about 25 years ago, um, one of the teachings that was coming into my life was coming into my life to teach me about faith and trust in every moment that unfolds. And that happened as a result of being diagnosed with breast cancer, not once, but twice, exactly two years apart in, in 25 years ago. And um, how it started for me, uh, you know, when I got that call, I, I thought my life was just over. In, in one, one flip of the coin, I thought, you know, how am I gonna manage to navigate through this time in my life? Uh, breast cancer, like any other major challenge that pops up into our lives, whether we lose a loved one, lose a job, uh, whatever it be, for me, breast cancer threw me right into the unknown middle. And I did not have a sense of outcome and how things would come through magazines quicker than you could count to 10. So I got up from my chair and I walked over to the nurse and I asked her for a pen and paper. And I came back to my chair and I just sat down and just started doodling, aimless little squiggles, lines that, that made no sense. Um, and then I just filled them in however I wanted. But over time, as I was waiting to be called into the doctor's appointment, I realized that this was actually helping me calm down and feel a little less stressed. So after I left the office that day and I was driving home, I realized that, you know, I think this was a powerful tool, but I'm not too sure what it's in my life to teach me. All I knew is I felt calmer, less anxious, and not as stressed. So bright and early the next morning, I jumped in my car and I ran down to the um, art supply store and I bought myself a spiral, blank spiral notebook. And I came home and I just started to doodle. And I really enjoyed having this little quiet activity. Uh, I, I'm, as I said, not only a recovering perfectionist, but I grew up as a paint by the number artist. So when you do paint by the number art, you know exactly what the end result is going to look like. All you have to do is pick up the pen that says number two, find the number two on the paper. Voila, you can create a beautiful piece of art. Um, so I never looked at myself as an artist. But when I did the doodling, I did something very, very, very simple that we all do when we're just maybe on a phone call or trying to, you know, keep focused during a meeting is I just wandered around the paper, picked up the pen and from beginning to end, didn't lift the pen off the piece of paper and tried to make an outline as quick as I could and then go back and fill it in with whatever I wanted. But I was so lost in the creative process that I was astounded when the end came and everything came together, how beautiful this art looked. And I wondered, well, where did this possibly come from? I'm not an artist and I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I had stepped into something really powerful. So I began to think about all the teachings that had been given to me along the way, studying with a meditation master. And the most powerful teaching that came to me then over 25 years ago and continues to walk with me through my life is about the healing power of resting in the present moment and letting go of that hook we all have into worrying about all those what if scenarios that will show up maybe tomorrow or all those if only I did this from yesterday. And the more I doodled, the more that teaching just was really resonating with me and the more beautiful the art, the art became. It really, I always refer to it as the three R's of doodling. It really allowed my spirit to rest and recover and, and regroup, regroup. But I often wondered, what is this really about? How can doodling do this? It becomes such a powerful, a powerful bridge to take me from fear to faith. And then I started looking, doing some research 
looking into doodling, the benefits of doodling. And I actually found a study all the way back to 1938 that was talking about how it really can quiet down that excess mental chatter that lives in that linear, logical left hemisphere of our brain and how it can possibly help us to increase those alpha wave patterns that just really help us feel less stressed, less anxious, feel calmer, and actually can help increase creativity in our focus. And there was another study done in 2009 that really showed that doodling is not a bad thing to do, you know, when you're trying to be part of a meeting or come up with brainstorming ideas. So I, I, for me, it became even something more powerful. What it did for me, it, it offered me a lifeline. It offered me a bridge to help me journey through something that was unknown and help me trust that, the, that I really just needed to show up in each and every moment and trust the process and not be so hooked into the destination. I used to create a lot of events for people and you know they all were so easy for me to see the bigger picture because I could piece together beginnings, middles, and ends. Um, and I never knew that I could feel as confident in myself by just showing up in a moment. And what I discovered through meditation practice and teachings is that when we do quiet that mental chatter and just calm ourselves down, that is the doorway and the pathway for us to step into that inherent wisdom we all have, where we want to find courage and strength and it was amazing to me, just absolutely amazing. So I, I have taken this project out into the world to all demographics, into the elderly, into schools with children because there is stress in every demographic. It doesn't matter what your age, the children are wonderful. You know, they, they're little Picassos and to give people an opportunity is don't worry about what the end result is gonna look like can you have some confidence in yourself that if you just show up in an unknown moment and just trust the process that you really can tap into you know the strength of who you are the creativity of what we all have so that's how it got started and my very first my very first workshop took me all the way i'm from the west coast in los angeles took me all the way to the uk to speak at an international conference on spirituality, healing, and health, because I really do believe that if we let, if we do not honor that spiritual aspect of who we are in the healing equation, we're missing something. We're missing something great. So um, I returned many, many years to do that. And um, I, I've, I've really have been so surprised, especially for someone like myself who came into the world as a pretty linear, logical left brain person and to find a creative tool that sounds so mindless and frivolous, and yet it has become a really powerful teaching tool in my life. Um, I teach doodling a little differently. I have a, a different spin on it. It's a three-step process because I'm not so concerned with what you create on the paper, but I, I want you to take a look at um, how you choose to show up in each moment in time and if you can let go of all the things that don't matter in this moment and just be free to experience and explore your own inner sacred world. So, you know, the step one is all about the approach, how we choose to approach a moment. And if we can just put aside everything else and just take a moment for ourselves. I think the most important thing is to recognize that stress is not going to be eliminated from our worlds and some stress is not a bad thing but when it builds up and becomes chronic it absolutely can have a negative impact on our health and well-being so we need to create strategies healthy strategies in our life whether you have 10 minutes five minutes 15 minutes make it a priority because when you can give that to yourself you have so much more to share with other people so that that's the most important thing to do and what i love about doodling it is cost effective all you need is a pen and paper it can be done anywhere except when you're driving a car you can do this with children with adults it's a wonderful family activity and it's it's fun and you know it's um 
I, I have learned, I started this doing it only in black and white because I was so afraid of the perfectionist in me. Didn't know if I started with green, what goes with green? If it's if orange is next to it, is that going to look good or bad? And then I went into a little classroom with seven-year-old, eight-year-old children, and they had all these Astro Bright gel pens. And I'm walking around the room and I was astounded how beautiful their art looked. It just like like stained glass. So I went in as a as a teacher and I left as the student. I, I learned that it, it just get out of my head. Don't worry, don't worry about it. So we're living in a crazy world right now. There's a lot going on. And you know, part of it is it, it's challenging times. And I think the best we can do is to show up each day and present the best of who we have to the person, to ourselves and to the people around us. And, uh, and, um, and I totally agree. Um, now tell us about the book, show us a copy of the book and oh, uh, where uh, we can uh, order this, it. This is the newest book that I've done, The Healing Power of Doodling, a mindfulness therapy to deal with stress challenges and, and life's um, and fear. This is the fourth book I've done. Um, my very first book, I, I needed to honor my own journey through through breast cancer. And, and so um, I, I just needed to put together however I wanted. This book is a little different than other coloring, uh, other doodling books you'll find, um, which are all wonderful. But I, I don't want you to have other people's outlines to fill in. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a lot of blank pages in the book for you. I have a lot of pages for you to journal I have a lot of contemplations uh, for you to think about and just give you an opportunity to step into your own world, have some quiet time. And, and hopefully, you know, um, and there's a lot of my art in there as well, along with art from children. But I want you to learn something about yourself. I want you to learn something about how you choose to approach each and every present moment the words you choose to describe whatever challenges in your world because they're powerful it will make or break your experience i'm not a breast cancer survivor i'm somebody who has conquered a diagnosis um, and and i think i will end by just sharing this i i was privileged to be a patient at a wonderful hospital out here in pasadena the city of hope that in the lobby of that hospital is a huge painting with the words written on it. There is no profit in curing the physical body if in the process you destroy the soul. And mm -hmm. as soon as I walked through the door and I read that, coming from the medical profession as is my husband, I looked at my husband and I said, I, you don't need to come with me every day as I get radiation because they understand the inherent power of the human spirit. And I would go there every day with my doodle book and I would do my way, you know, uh, through every appointment and teach it to others along the way. So um, I will never look back at the diagnosis with breast cancer and feel I was victimized by something really scary. I really learned a great deal about myself and empowered and I've earned the scars and the tattoos and I hold them dearly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That's amazing, Carol. I'm just the book I mean, is um uh, I've just redone the whole website. I'm now known as the Doodle Lady, so you can find me the doodlelady.com. Okay, okay. And there is also a link on there to take you over to Pinterest where I've just uploaded a lot of art up there. And we'll see where tomorrow takes me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I keep thinking I'm at an age where, well, my husband's so retired, am I supposed to stop doing this? But I am wired for service. Very I'm good. wanting to just share, you know, with the world. Very, yes. No, you, felt, you, look, you seem like, and I get it from you, and you're sharing some valuable tools and benefits. You're in a great space, and you haven't, and you've transformed yourself in a way that it's obvious, it's obvious, it's revealing. And I, I'm, I'm impressed with your presentation. And I'm also impressed with your story. What a wonderful story. You just, I mean, it, it's enormously gratifying. And you, you asked the question in us, find out from yourself who you really are and you know, speak to those issues that are relevant for you today and tomorrow. Uh, amazing, amazing. Well, be here now, you know, right. you can be somewhere else tomorrow. Is right. that so complicated? Right, right, awesome. 
Awesome. Does anyone so, have any questions for Carol before we end this segment? Okay. I know that uh, Drea has to leave early. So Drea, uh, do you want to speak next? Sure, Dia. Okay. Dia. Yeah. Okay. There's no R. Okay. Yeah, 